being in the middle of this particular community in Inglewood, we are sandwiched between a highway, a freeway, underneath the LAX flight plan, and less than a mile away from the new Rams stadium. A lot of our students that attend our school live in the immediate neighborhood. My seventh graders for their end of the unit project now, where we've been looking at ecosystems and biodiversity, they're getting ready to do a project in their own street, in their own community, on their own block about the tree and taking care of the trees that are on their own blocks. Some kids are like, there's no trees on my street at all. And then they start wondering, well, wait a minute, why don't I have trees on my street? And then that prompts questions. The existence of tree cover and the amount of tree cover in different neighborhoods is associated with the overall socioeconomics of those neighborhoods. You have neighborhoods that have a lot less tree cover associated with a lot more poverty. They also are less likely to have air conditioning. You know, you put these two things together and that makes for really vulnerable communities to increases in extreme heat. We see that experienced across the city in what are typically our lower income communities of color that have been underinvested and face, you know, these, these inequitable impacts and often have the least resources to be able to address them. A lot of kids have never made a mud pie. You know, they've never had an opportunity to see how an apple really grows on a tree. We're a school that believes children need to be outside. They need to be out in fresh air. They need to connect to the land. So we bring classrooms outside and that can be difficult when it's like 90 degrees. I have definitely seen more days of hot, sunny days, um, especially as we've had less rain in the last few years. And so it has, it does impact them where they can only sit in that sun for five, maybe 10 minutes at a time before they're melting and they can't see and they can't think. And it's just like, it takes their focus away. The urban heat island effect describes a phenomenon where cities are typically warmer than rural surroundings. This occurs due to the process of urbanization. We replace natural vegetative cover with human-made materials that go into buildings, asphalt pavement, things like this. And they absorb the heat, they retain it, and then they can pass it back to the environment in the evening and at night. And when you lose vegetation as you urbanize, you reduce this natural air conditioner that vegetation provides. You also lose shade that vegetation can provide. We know that when we are addressing urban cooling through a series of measures, we can meet multiple benefits. And so tree planting is key. In addition to that, we've been experimenting and innovating on a number of other ways to enhance urban cooling. An example of that is cool pavements, which in some cases can, can literally be laying a coating on our streets that is a much lighter coating over the dark asphalt. All of the heat mitigation strategies work in one of two ways. They either try to reflect an increased amount of sunlight or they deploy an increased amount of vegetation. So in essence, we're trying to reverse the things that cause the urban heat island effect. So we are in Northeast LA, a neighborhood called Glasswell Park, where we do have a lot of transit dependent people. A lot of our bus shelters around LA, um, it's a program that's been a lot driven by ad revenue. It's left um, more working class neighborhoods like this one without as much bus shelters um, as some of the more wealthy parts of town.
when I first came here, this was all blacktop, even this. There was none of this. It was blacktop that came up to the building. So it's been, it's been difficult until we made it an explicit point to make sure that we planted trees on site and around our site. And so one year our eighth graders um, built benches and then we were able to put in grape because we wanted to shade. This is a second life career for me. I was not a teacher before. I wanted to work in communities where I could share my passion around nature and the environment. And I think it starts with teaching and showing kids how connected we are and how it doesn't have to be such a scary job to be part of the solution, that you can change the way that you see the world, and in that, it changes the way that you move and you act and you make decisions within the world.